There are more stars in the universe than grains of sand on Earth. Some stars pulse with lethal radiation 160 times a second. Others make their planets rain molten glass sideways, and a few feel oddly like home. Today, we're dropping Earth into some of the galaxy's strangest solar systems. First up, HD 189733, a binary star system 64 light years away. Earth gets dropped into this neighborhood, and the main star, HD 189733A, is a K-type, smaller and cooler than your old sun. Looks friendly enough from a distance, but then you realize where Earth is being placed. Earth is sliding into orbit of HD 189733B, the local hot Jupiter, just 0.03 AU from the star. That is 30 times closer than Earth used to be to the Sun. So the moment you arrive, you're absorbing hundreds of times more stellar energy than your planet can handle. Your oceans don't just boil, they vanish. Your atmosphere doesn't gradually heat up, it gets stripped away. And the surface doesn't warm, it cooks above 1000 degrees Celsius, glowing like a pizza oven. But here's where your day gets really interesting. You look up and the sky is cobalt blue. Beautiful, right? Except it's blue because the atmosphere is laced with silicate particles, and those particles are falling as glass, sideways, driven by winds that would make Earth's worst hurricanes look like a gentle breeze. We're talking 5,400 miles per hour. You are being sandblasted by glass rain in hypersonic winds while standing on a surface hot enough to melt copper. Oh, and the star? It's blasting you with x-rays. So your ozone layer vaporizes in hours, Earth's magnetic field can't hold the line, and space starts eating the air itself. Verdict? You become a glittery, silicate-sprinkled cinder drifting through a cosmic glass storm. But wait, could you survive here at all? Well, maybe if you kept your distance. HD 189733A's luminosity is about 80% that of the Sun. So to feel like home, you need to orbit much, much further than we currently orbit our Sun. The problem, no planets exist safely out there, and there's no middle ground in this system, just extremes. Too close, you burn. Too far and you freeze in interstellar night. Next up, things get grim, and pretty fast. Earth is now being placed in orbit around PSR B1257 plus 12, a pulsar. Not quite a star anymore, more like the ultra-dense corpse of one that went supernova. It doesn't shine, it blasts radiation. This thing spins 160 times a second, sweeping pace with beams of high-energy particles like a lighthouse. If the lighthouse were to fire death rays. The planet's already here. The first exoplanets humans ever found are somehow still hanging on. Just barely. Earth drops in, and you immediately realize you don't burn this time. You freeze, and you're being irradiated into oblivion. There's no sunlight here, just pulses of radio waves, x-rays, and gamma rays hammering your atmosphere every six milliseconds. The surface plunges into deep freeze. Above you, auroras rage across the sky, sparked by relentless particle storms. It's stunning, yet completely deadly. Your DNA is getting shredded, your electronics are fried, and the ice caps aren't melting. They're growing. Could you somehow live here? No. Just... No. Next up, Methuselah, the universe's senior citizen, and your loneliest possible home. Earth gets dropped around HD 140283, a yellow subgiant 200 light years away. This ancient population 2 star has 1 250th the sun's metallicity. It formed when the universe was still figuring out how to make anything heavier than hydrogen and helium. And here's the cosmic joke. Astronomers once estimated its age at 14.5 billion years, briefly making it older than the universe itself, 13.8 billion years. Awkward. Newer estimates, though, put it between 12 and 14 billion years. Still ancient enough to have formed within a few hundred million years of the Big Bang. You're orbiting a fossil from the universe's baby days, burning with 12 billion years of cosmic memory. But here's your problem. Methuselah has no known planets, and even if one existed, your aging parent star is dimming and puffing into its subgiant phase. 
There's no stable, habitable orbit here. Just you, floating around the galaxy's most spectacular case of stellar loneliness. Verdict? Earth around Methuselah would be fascinating. If only there was anywhere to actually be. Next up, we go from lonely to fried. Earth is being placed in orbit around the orange dwarf star K2141, sliding into an orbit that's way too cozy for comfort. Just 0.007 AU out, that's tighter than Mercury's already reckless orbit around the Sun. Welcome to K2141b's neighborhood, a place that scientists politely call a lava world. And you're about to find out why. The temperature is what hits you first, over 3,000 degrees Celsius on the day side. Now, that is not just hot, it is enough to vaporize rock. Your crust doesn't melt, it boils, and the surface becomes a seething ocean of magma stretching to every horizon. Rock turns to vapor, floats into your sky, cools down in the upper atmosphere, and then rains back down as stone. You are experiencing stone rain while floating on a magma ocean. And because you're so close to the star, you've become tidally locked. One face of Earth stares into the furnace forever. The other side freezes in eternal darkness. Supersonic winds roar across the day-night boundary, carrying vaporized minerals like a demented atmospheric conveyor belt. This isn't weather. This is a geological steam. You've become a molten smoothie, topped with rock-flavored clouds. But could you survive here if you kept your distance? Maybe. K2141 is a dim K7 dwarf, only about 18% as bright as the sun. For you to feel anything like home, you need to back off to around 0.42 AU. That's about 60 times farther out than K2141b's current hellish orbit. The problem? No known planets exist that far out in this system, and it's unclear if stable outer orbits can even form here. Survival? Theoretically possible. Practicality? you're still living in Mondor or Mustafar. Now, before we head to a more peaceful orbit, let's talk about something that won't vaporize your oceans. Brilliant, today's sponsor. Brilliant is a learning app built for people who like to think, and instead of watching videos, you solve interactive problems. So you're not just memorizing facts, you're actually understanding them. This hands-on method is proven to be up to six times more effective than lecture-based learning. And the range of topics, Honestly, it's kind of insane. You can dive into foundational courses like algebra, geometry, and physics, but also explore programming, electrical engineering, AI, neural networks, data science, logic, quantum computing, and more. Whether you want to translate ideas into code, simulate experiments, or just get better at solving tricky problems, there's something here for you. And all of it is crafted by experts from places like MIT, Caltech, Google, and Microsoft. It's not just smart. It's beautifully designed to keep you curious and motivated, one daily challenge at a time. So, if your brain's hungry for something less catastrophic than a lava planet, head to brilliant.org slash stay curious, scan the QR code on screen, or click the link down in the description. You can start learning for free, and Brilliant's giving viewers 20% off annual premium subscriptions. All right, let's get back and go find a star that won't turn Earth into soup. Next up, something that feels almost familiar. Tyuseti, a GA-type star, smaller and cooler than the Sun. Earth settles into orbit at about 0.75 AU, right in the sweet spot. Perfect lighting, stable orbit, life-friendly temperatures. You're thinking Earth might have finally found its new home. But then, you look up at the night sky and realize the problem. Tyuseti is surrounded by a massive debris disk, 10 times the asteroid and comet density of your old solar system. This isn't just cosmic clutter, it's a 55 AU wide killing field extending from 10 AU to the system's edge. Those aren't pretty lights up there, they're extinction events waiting to happen. Big impacts that would sterilize your surface don't happen every 100 million years here, they happen a lot more often. You're stuck in cosmic whack-a-mole. Life evolves, gets wiped out, starts over, and then you repeat. But could you actually live here? Climatically, absolutely. Tyuseti's habitable zone spans 0.55 to 1.16 AU, and at 0.75 AU, you're in the Goldilocks zone. The star pumps out 52 to 55% of the sun's energy, giving you just the right stellar warmth. 
you could grow crops, support liquid water, even thrive. Better yet, Tayuseti already has confirmed planets. Tayuseti F orbits at 1.33 AU, takes 1.7 Earth years to orbit, and is 4 times Earth's mass and 1. times longer. A super Earth that might support a thick atmosphere and stable climate. The problem? Location, location, location. This system's debris disk contains at least an order of magnitude more material than our Cupier belt. Even at a safe 1.33 AU, you'd live under a cosmic sort of Damocles. The sky just keeps trying to kill you. You may survive the star, but the neighborhood is a shooting gallery. Verdict, Earth analog climate, extinction level bombardment. And finally, let's end on a high note. Earth is being placed around Kepler-442, a calm orange K-type dwarf. Long-lived, low on flares, quietly burning for billions more years. A cosmic slow burn perfect for stability. The planet parks at 0.41 AU, right where Kepler-442b already orbits. Here is the sweet spot. While Kepler-442 only puts out 12% of the Sun's energy, you're orbiting much closer, 0.41 AU instead of Earth's usual 1 AU. The math works out perfectly. You still receive about 70% of your familiar sunlight, it's a warm, golden orange glow with barely any UV to worry about, less risk of sunburn, more cozy afternoon vibes forever. Your year only lasts 112 Earth days, but you still get day and night cycles, regular seasons too, so no tidal locking to freeze one half and roast the other. Photosynthesis adapts. Your planets darken their leaves, widen their reach, drinking in every photon of that gentler light. Forests might look deeper, richer, maybe alien in their new shades, but they grow. The climate cools slightly, but Earth has backup systems, greenhouse gases, ocean currents, and atmospheric feedbacks. You find a new equilibrium, colder poles, a narrower tropical band, but nothing extreme. No flares, no hot Jupiters distorting orbits, no debris disks raining down at apocalypse. You could thrive here, maybe even better than back home. So what happens when you drop Earth into alien solar systems? Usually, you die. I mean, our sun isn't special because it's flashy, it's special because it isn't. No supernova leftovers, no lava ocean neighbors, no relentless asteroid firestorms. Just boring, stable, life-giving mediocrity. Your survival depends on a delicate cocktail. The right star, the right orbit, the right cosmic history. Change any variable and you become space dust with delusions of grandeur. So could Earth make it elsewhere? Sometimes, but most of the time, it's a pretty hard no. The universe is vast and full of wonders. Most of them want to kill you though. But hey, at least the views are spectacular. And if you enjoyed this cosmic tour, be sure to hit that like button, drop a comment about which stellar nightmare you'd least like to visit, and subscribe for more ways that the universe is trying to kill you.